Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our release party. I am Gina from Gina K Designs. I'm here with Tom, and we've got some of our illustrators that are going to join us. And tonight is going to be so much fun. It's Stampin' Chat Live a Monday night, and we're going to get through this Monday night together. I'm so excited about tonight, guys. I can't even begin to tell you. And I see so many of you asking about how our family reunion trip was. And honestly, it was great. We had a really wonderful time. We were able to meet everybody. Um, it was my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law, and his wife, and Tom and I, and our niece. So it was really, really super nice to see everybody. We hadn't seen them in so long. And a few other folks in there, too. And a few other folks, yeah. We have a few other family members and friends that popped in and out, but uh, mostly it was small gathering and uh, we felt very safe. Everybody was vaccinated. We were, we felt like we were in a good place. So we had a great time, right, Tom? Excellent, excellent time. Yeah. So it's great to see you all. I see lots of people coming in from Facebook and YouTube and Twitch. Welcome to everyone from all of our platforms. We're great to have you here. Uh, let's see here. So what do we have tonight? Well, we have um, several brand new stamp sets, some new die sets. We have a brand new layering stencil bundle. All of the stamp sets from the last kit, including the large wreath builder template, that too, are all now available in our store as well. And uh, we have a special little thing, a special little thing that we weren't going, going to release today, but we can because it came in earlier than expected and you're going to love it. And I think it's perfect for tonight. Also, we have a brand new incentive set that just debuted. And I think it would be really fun to start off, you know, once again, I always forget to take everything out of the package and I want to do that. So why don't we show everybody um, the brand new incentive set, Tom. Let's start with that. Let me get it out of the package here. Here it is. Here she is. Look at that. Okay, guys, I know some of you follow us on Facebook and also on Instagram, and I was able to post a picture of this earlier. This is called Grateful Greenery, and I absolutely love this set. Now, I'll tell you a little bit about it if you're new to Gina K Designs. Every time we do a release, we have a brand new incentive stamp set. And this stamp set is yours for free with any $75 purchase. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to put it in your cart. You don't have to remember to add it. You, there's no code or anything. This automatically ships free. And when you get your box or your package, if you don't see it in with the other stuff, that's because... Karen, who takes care of every single order, thousands and thousands and thousands of orders every release, she touches your receipt and makes sure that if you qualify that you get this set and she staples this set to your invoice. So that's where you're going to find it. And absolutely, I see some of you already thinking what I'm thinking. This set is going to be perfect for both the original and the new large wreath builder because of all of these beautiful designs that you can use. Um, these will fit perfectly inside those center circles and frames of our other wreath builder sets and some of our master layout sets. And this is also a beautiful autumn feeling set for um, doing backgrounds. So can you imagine how beautiful these backgrounds would be in all autumn colors? You could just create your own pattern paper. That's one of the things that I love about these smaller designs is how easy it is to create your own beautiful pattern paper in the colors that you want to match either your cards or your scrap of pages or your outfit, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing coral reef today, right? Okay, so this is yours free. It's called Grateful Greenery. It will ship free with any order of $75 or more. So I had to show you that up front. You know I'm going to have to make a card this month using this because it is so pretty. Um, so Stephanie, if you didn't get your incentive set and you were supposed to, just give customer service a call or an email at info at .com. They'll check your order to make sure that it qualified. And one thing I do want to say is that um, it's $75 before tax and shipping. 
So it the the actual net the total before we add tax and shipping has to be seventy five dollars, and if it is, then you qualify for this stamp set. If you didn't receive it, you can always contact customer service. We'll check your order, and you know we can fix that for you. But it should be on your invoice. Now, if it fell off of the invoice and it was in the package, it'll be still in your package. So just make sure you check for it. I always say empty out the box completely because you never know what's in there. All right. Yes, right, Lenise. Not $74.89. It has to be $75. That's what triggers those invoices for Karen. Okay. So now I have, let's go to my front shot here because I have a very special guest waiting in the wings and she has a brand new set to show you tonight. Now this stamp set was one of the stamp sets. Of course, we did sneak peeks of it. Everybody was freaking out over this giant diamond and this diamond too, thinking about all the cool backgrounds that you're going to be able to make with this set, aside from the fact that this is one of the most beautiful sunflower sets I've ever seen. You're going to love it. So let's bring her in. It is Lisa Hetrick. Hello, Lisa. Hi, everyone. Good evening. I'm so excited to be here. It's so great to see you. You look beautiful as always. Thank you. Well, Lisa, speaking of beautiful, this stamp set knocked my socks off so much that I want you to know <laughs> that... I actually was invited to do a video over on the Simon Says Stamp YouTube channel and blog. And I think they probably posted it tonight and I used oh, I this stamp set. Oh, that's yeah. so cool. More so, inspiration for everyone. Yes, more inspiration. That's right. So um, Tom will go to the overhead on my side and I will back out a bit here so everybody can see the stamp set. And what is your stamp set called? It is called Bloom and Grow. Bloom and Bloom grow. And grow. All right. So there's will you a tell reason why. Yes, I know there's always a reason. Lisa always has a reason. Let me move this up a little bit so that you can see it all there. Okay. So, um, so I absolutely love sunflowers. So I grew them. I've got them growing in the garden. They're actually being taken over by tomatoes right now. But I just really wanted to do a sunflower set. And while I was growing this one a couple months ago, I was singing the song from Sound of Music, Edelweiss, which has nothing to do with sunflowers. <laughs> but it, <laughs> there's the, the term uh, bloom and grow forever in it. So I just kept singing it over and over and over again, a little loudly at, at some times. So that's why I named it Bloom and Grow. But um because that was in my mind while I was illustrating. So it was a nice memory for me because I absolutely love that song and that movie. Um, but it's not Edelweiss. It's sunflowers. So it's sunflowers. It's sunflowers. And I just love sunflowers. And I just love the shape of this particular flower because you could do anything with it by changing its color. And it's also just beautiful for this time of year. And as we move into fall. I don't like to rush our seasons, and but we have like September, October, and November where these beautiful flowers are going to be just shining their faces. And I just wanted us to all have that kind of joy stamping into the next few months. So that well, they sure are amazing. I used the open one in my video and I was able to do an embossed resist technique using ink and then colored pencils on top of it. And I'll tell you, it was one of the most fun cards that I've made in a long time. It was really fun. There are a lot of super fun elements in this set. And I do have a video that will be coming out after the live that walks through, at, like I do every month, a walkthrough video that'll walk you through some of the interesting things with the set and I've got like this little thing that I'm going to talk about. So you've got lots of opportunities with this set to do the two-step stamping with the larger flat, larger bloom or the smaller sunflower bloom. And one of the things I want to mention about the die that goes the well, there's a die set, but there's a large flower die and a small flower die. And those two dies work with both the silhouette and the line art. So with the line art version of the bloom, it's a little bit tighter around it, but with the silhouette version, you get a little bit of an edge around it. And that's one way to 
bring you have less dies, but one die that does two things. So I, I love, really that. love that. Really, mm -hmm. really wanted to bring that um, idea with, especially for two step stamping. We have that opportunity to do that with this set. But the really fun thing, and everybody knows, I'm pretty sure everybody knows how much I really like stamps to be the star of the show and do all the things. Um, without adding adding a lot of texture and dimension, without adding a lot of height to our projects. So these big honking diamonds that are in there are just absolutely perfect for building your own background. So I'm gonna show you a quick sample here. Oh, that's great. And this is, you know, let me back it up a little bit. This is a little bit of an unusual color scheme for sunflowers, so it's, but it's fun. It's kind of pop arty and those, Diamonds have a little bit of a watercolor edge around them. So it's not a perfect shape. It's got a little bit of a softness to it, like a brush stroke that goes around those edges. So it adds a little bit of softness to your pattern when you're creating with it. And you can nest those diamonds together to create really fun patterns. I, I love that. I, and I do, I love that kind of sketch style. It has yes. that roughness to it. Yes. So do we want to see some examples? <clears throat> yes. Okay, 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 okay. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. So here is a super fun sample using the um, one of the master layout styles that's that open window. I had been dying to do a floral spray on that window. Now, um, I know that several people in our Facebook group have asked for a specific video tutorial on the floral sprays, especially in the last stamp set. Well, I did do it and we've got this one too. I wanted to just kind of jump on that one and kind of um, show both, show both stamp sets in this kind of floral spray look and feel. But I love layering it with that new favorite master layout style. I love that. You know, I didn't use the scallop this month. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't use the scallop master layouts die this month. I used all the others. So super fun. So here is another um, card that actually uses um, one of the sentiments from Melanie's brand new set that's coming out tonight. And I used <clears throat> the large and the small blooms in the open line to create that, uh, create a pattern and just do a really quick watercolor. So super wow. fun. And this is embossed. And I'm what's called a um, uh, maybe a lazy embosser uh, because I have a lot of texture and I forget to use that little pad. So I like it when we get a little bit of extra stuff on our cards. So super fun. Okay. So here's another fun one. So actually I show both of these at the same time so that you can see similar design. Oops. Similar design of the card, but one uses the silhouette version of the bloom and the other uses the open line version of the bloom. Wow. And that's again, beautiful. again, the making the the stamp be the star of the show, where we end up with using the larger blooms and the smaller bloom together to create that pattern in the background. Okay, everybody, I I, I just want to say real quick, oh. I know that some of you are saying that the die set isn't up on the site. Um, I have Sammy looking into that to make sure it's there, just to make sure that one published. If it didn't publish, it will be up in just a few minutes. So hang in there either way. It's great. Sammy's on standby, which is wonderful. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> Lisa, can you put that card back up again? That, yes. that one with the white flower. Okay, everybody look at that. Isn't that so cool how Lisa added so much color to that card yet the line art flower is still black and black white that and is top. such a great kind of reverse color theory kind of thing i love it yeah i Beautiful. always like to use black in my cards it's usually for the sentiments because that's that extra pop that that creates a little bit more attention to your card but in this stamp set this month there is no sentiments for me because all of our illustrators have some amazing sentiments and the incentive. So I always feel like I'm never leaving anybody behind because there's always some amazing um, sentiments in all the sets that are out. 
That's so true. And also, I just wanted to say, I see everybody's comments coming through. So if you're not seeing the die set, there are two pages of new items on our on our um, what's new category. So the dies are on one page and the stamps are on the other yes. page. So make sure you look at both pages. People are saying, yep, they're there. I already ordered them. <laughs> so here is, okay. I'm going to show one more. Yes, please I think do. Melanie's coming in. So here is another card that uses, actually, it's a little sneak peek at um, Emily's new set. And we were talking about sentiments, but this is a really fun card where it was just kind of creating that wreath look. And I use that big honking sentiment and die right there in the center. I and, love that. Uh, did you yeah, do that was for fun? Did you do like a rock and roll technique? I did. <laughs> I do a lot of old school techniques that rock and roll. So that is tangerine and tangerine twist and um Wild dandelion, always wild dandelion, <laughs> <laughs> always, always, always. So super fun. I really, really, we're going to have so much fun with this set in the videos to come and all the tutorials. And of course, I have a handout for the um, card idea sheet. So, so if you guys haven't been to our website before, um, Make sure that you check both Lisa's website, our Facebook group, and then I'm not sure, does Sammy already have that from you, Sammy Lisa? has it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so you can look right on the product itself, mm -hmm. and you will find that idea sheet. So um, Lisa has an idea sheet with every one of her stamp sets, and they are so beautiful and useful. You can print them out and make a book of, book of them, and you just That'd never run cool. out of ideas. I love that. Maybe I should do that. <laughs> Make a whole book? Yes. That would be awesome. That would be kind of fun. <laughs> there are some, I know that a couple people have uh, emailed me. There are four four or five stamp sets from the earlier, earlier times, the earlier times, um, where I don't have idea sheets for. Because at that time, we were sharing idea sheets with our internal team. So, right. and all I have to do is translate them over into a format that makes sense for everybody. And my plan is to have those all completed by the end of the month. So, wow. yeah. Wow. Well, Lisa, I, you outdid yourself with this one. And I feel like I say that every month, but they just keep getting more and more amazing. And this is, I mean, everybody needs sunflowers. You all need sunflowers in your collection. This one is so much fun. I can't, I haven't tackled the diamond yet, but I'm ready it to do some diamond so stamping. Much fun. So much fun. I think it would be really cool with some of the embossing powders and oh, it'll just be, or Definitely. with a little bit of um, like, if you, I forget what the technique is called, but you take the, we've got the solid and then we stamp something else inside of it and then stamp again kissing oh kissing, kissing. yeah oh. definitely that wouldn't would that be, be pretty to take these diamonds and like kiss them on our script background yes. or the petite flourish to add yes. that as a background that extra... <laughs> all right lisa i'm gonna <laughs> sign you that video <laughs> yes. i'm gonna add that in <laughs> absolutely you should oh this is absolutely gorgeous so let's take a look one more time at the overhead shot so we can look at yeah. this stamp set again so this is the bloom and grow stamp set it's from also the movie 20th <laughs> stamp set with Jeannie k design it's your 20th it's my 20th oh we should set. celebrate that's amazing your 20th <laughs> well congratulations lisa that's a lot of drawing and a lot of beautiful Counted them out today. I'm like, oh, this is the 20th release. Wow, that's great. that's amazing. Okay. And then for those of you who di who didn't see this, there is a full die set that goes along with this stamp set. Of course, all of our coordinating dies. When we have a full set of coordinating dies, they come to you on a magnetic board, and these are solid, thick magnetic boards. They're not flimsy at all. They're not like those. Um, a lot of people use the vent covers yeah. and they're very bendable. And so when you pick them up, they bend and the dies pop off. Not these. These are hard boards. So they're great to store your um, your dies on. They just don't come off of here. And it also allows you to store your stamps and dies together in a stamp pocket. 
So this is another amazing set, Lisa. Thank you Thank so you. much for being here and sharing your inspiration. Check out Lisa's social media. She's on Instagram. She's on YouTube. She's on Facebook. She's got a blog. If you want to find where you can find her out there, just visit GinaKDesigns.com. Hover over the About tab, and then our team will drop down. You can... Uh, Click on that and all of the members of our team show up. You click on their face and all their social media will pop up. You'll be able to find them. Lisa, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you I, so much for having me. Oh, it was Thanks. great to have you. Super and uh, to the rest you, of the show. you have a video coming up? I do. I have yeah. a video that will come up at the end of this live okay that is well that is the walkthrough and kind of deeper dives into all of the there's more there's actually more cards i didn't show so Excellent. more inspiration and also go into that two-step stamping uh and how the dies work with so there's a video Excellent. All right Lisa well we'll look forward to that um and you have a great night thank you for being here Thank you, everyone. All right. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right. Well, that was Lisa. Lisa, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, let's see. Now, we only were able to get two of our illustrators to come tonight. Everybody's so busy with all kinds of different things. So we only have two illustrators tonight, Lisa and Melanie. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a few minutes to show you uh, one of our other illustrators' stamp sets. So since Lisa gave us a sneak peek, I'm going to show you this one next. This is the brand new set by Emily Loggins, and it's called Thank You, Thank You Greetings. And this is, I love this. Look at this poster board feel to this gigantic greeting. Thank you for always being there. In everything, give thanks. Happy Thanksgiving, friend. And then she also has a nice big bold thank you and a thanks a lot. And then with this thank you, you can do thank you for all you do, for everything, for lending a hand, for making my day brighter, or thank you so much. So this is a fantastic set. And one thing I wanted to tell you is, see this right here? Okay, so if you just want the banner, all you have to do is take a little bit of washi tape and block off the greetings before you ink them up. So what you do is you go onto the back side here and you put a little washi tape over these words, then ink up the banner, peel the washi tape off, there'll be no ink on the words and stamp it and you'll have a nice big bold banner where you can add words in there that you have in your collection from other sets. And this set has just one die. So these were so big and it really didn't make sense to cut them out because like, for example, this one, this is really meant to make some really cool background like alcohol inks or ink blending or, you know, some other kind of fun backgrounds and then stamp this right over it in black. Same with this. It's just a big, bold greeting. And then these you'll probably use with some of the other stamp sets like Lisa's stamp set to add a little greeting to a floral design or one of the other designs. So this one, we thought because it's a banner, it would be fun to cut out. So you can pick up the coordinating banner die. And this one, because it's not a full set, it just comes like this. It's a single die. And that will cut that out perfectly. So you're going to be able to use this banner for a lot more than you realize. Because although Emily put happy Thanksgiving friend and we all need that, when Thanksgiving is, has come and gone, you'll be able to continue to use this by just adding a little washi tape right over there and inking that up. So I'm going to, I'll, I'm going to show you that in a video or I'm going to get somebody to show you that in a video because I think that's really cool. Maybe I'll do it in one of those quick sped up videos and post it on uh, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Okay, so that is the beautiful new thank you greetings and the coordinating thank you banner die by Emily Loggins. All right, so now we have our next illustrator waiting in the wings. She's got an amazing set for us. And, you know, Melanie's been coming up with it. 
she has been coming up with the the big sellouts. I'm telling you, she she's amazing. And the thing about this stamp set is, I know a couple of couple of you said I don't see coordinating dies. This one doesn't have coordinating dies because this is meant to build scenes. And Melanie has so many ideas. She sent me a picture that had so many cards that she already made in it that I had to like blow it up on my phone because the cards were so small because there were so many. She's got some amazing ideas. So let's welcome her. Hello, Melanie. Mentioned. Hi. Hey, how are Hi. you? It's great to see you. Thank you. You look beautiful as Thank ever. You. So do you. Thank you. Well, your new set, I got to show everybody. So let's go to the overhead here, Tom. I got to show everybody this. Look at these magnificent mallards. Now this set, I, okay, so ducks are everywhere in Wisconsin. This time of year, they're all over the place. They're walking all around. <laughs> they're everywhere. And I love this because everybody loves nature and everybody loves, so, you know, men and women, everybody. But this does give us another option for some masculine cards if you've got a guy who does not want flowers on his card. <laughs> so I love this. So Melanie, tell us about this set. Okay, well, um, what I wanna say about it that you didn't already say, that was a really nice intro. So um, one thing I wanna point out really quickly, I mean, in addition to all the images is the greetings. I kept seeing people asking over and over again. We have so many um, male stampers and people that really wanna say, for my wife. Um, so I have wife, husband and wife in there, from your wife, from your husband. So we don't wanna exclude anybody here. It's gonna work for so many different things. And I really loved how, since we clearly got a male and female duck, we've got some larger ones and then some smaller ones, depending on whether you want a bigger or a smaller scene. Um, it's just so fun having the male and female together if you want, or to have the little groupings of ducklings and the number, just the right combination that represents either your family that it's coming from or the family that you're giving it to. I just think that that's a really really nice way to kind of represent that thought. One of the cards I did, I meant to actually put from your wife and I put for your wife because we've got for my, for your, from our, so that you can do all those combinations. But even though I put for your, for your wife on there, I realized who this is perfect for. We have a lot of people at my husband's, um, my husband's job that I never meet, or maybe I'll meet them at a party, but I don't meet their wives. And you hear a lot of times there are um, uh, maybe prayer requests or just things going on in their family that I really want for him to be able to give a card that I made to them. And they might not be people that I ever meet. Um, you know, so the connection really, if, if, if this is making sense, what I'm saying, it's going through the husband, but to somebody else's wife. Does that make sense? So like we just we don't always know like the person that we're giving it to. So I just think this creates a lot of combinations. Are you are you are is that making sense what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, it does. Okay. It absolutely okay. does. And I love that you thought of that. And the other thing that I love that you thought of, and maybe you're gonna get to this, but I just have to mention it, is um that you have from our family. Because so many of the cards that we make come from us individually. Yes. You, know, you know, from me or I care about you. I'm thinking of you. I'm praying for you. But when you have a family and you want to send a card for whatever particular reason, it is nice to be able to say from our family. And I love that you thought of that in there. And yeah. we're thank you because our our kids are getting bigger. Like you know, they might not hear from them or get a card from them, but we talk about it as a family. You know what's going on with all the different people we know. So right. yeah, you really do want to kind of send it. Let them let them know that we're all thinking about you in this. So absolutely, absolutely, and I love that you added some elements these uh, to add into the water. What are these it's called? Like are these like cattails? Yeah. I, I love them. We have them all over Wisconsin and they're all starting to like really come out now because it's fall. So I'm excited to be able to build some scenes with these in there. And one of the reasons why we didn't do uh, dies for this is because 
Um, well, first of all, these are super easy to cut out because they're just very rounded. Right. There's nothing intricate about these at all. Right. All the detail is inside the stamp. So they're super easy to cut out if you did want to pop something up. But um, Melanie has done us all the favor of adding the water lines around these ducks because I don't know how to do that very well. And when you stamp it on there inside an ink blended water kind of element, it really does look like water because she added all of those. So yes, it was it was one or the other. We could have done dyes or we could have gotten rid of the water. And I thought that that was really important to have. I show y'all how to make more little waves and ripples, but just having that instantly, you can create the card so fast. And to have a die, it wouldn't really look like it was coming out of the water. It would look like it was in front of the water. And so that's just not really what we were going for. So everything that I made tonight, I'm sure I will cut out some ducks eventually. But the video that um, just went live, it just got done processing. Um, and all the cards that I made tonight so far, I have not cut out a single duck. And I have not even cut masks to cover up the dust, the ducks. I've just been going around with my blending brush, just nice and easy and had no problems. It, 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 it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. It's so easy to work with. And I don't think people realize how big these elements are. And I just want to give them an example here. Um, okay. So here is a half, here's a card base that I'm folding very badly. <laughs> It's all right. I'll use it to cut out. But look how big these are. I mean, yeah, so you can these turn it and it takes up that whole card front almost. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm not really sure. Personally, I don't think that I would want to cut them out because I would just have this big white panel on there with my scene built and that image just stamped right on there. So yeah. I think it was the right decision. And I when they see your cards, they're going to know. <laughs> Are you ready to see some cards? Yes. All right. Well, let me cards. start. I'm going to start just super simple. Like if you don't want to do any blending, if you don't want to do any coloring or any drawing to make those little waves. Um, so I wanted to show you this one that I stamped on craft. And so here we've got just our mama and then the three little ducklings. So if you look on there, you can do individual ducks or there's a group of two or a group of three. And they're all, I've got all the different ducks facing different directions. So if you want them to be following each other, if you want to make it look like they're talking to each other, you can do all of that. And then all I have done there is just kind of mimicked, just gone around the lines that I already had, those ripples on the stamp, just with a white gel pen and added a few highlights on the bills. And then just a little bit on that cattail right there. And I mean, it just, it really pops. So. It really does. And that greeting is amazing. That is a greeting that everybody is missing. So thankful we're family. Oh my gosh. I love that. Thank you. I it love just, that. It really just make, makes my heart kind of warm up because we got family all over the country. We got friends all over the country, people I haven't seen in a year and a half now. So anyway, I don't want to talk about it. I'll get all, get all. Yeah, but you know all, what? You know what? Tonight. That's also a great Thanksgiving card. Yes. What a what a way to say what a way to say happy Thanksgiving that you're thankful that we're family. That's beautiful. So let me pump it up a little bit. This is the card that is in the video tonight. And so this oh. is stamped on our whisper card stock. And then the base is that stormy sky. Um, so I just did some blending with the soft stone ink and one of your blending brushes around these ducks. I didn't cover them up. All I did was just use a piece of scratch paper to mask that horizon. And then that's just one marker, just a gray marker over that, just doing just some little dashes and skips and around those little ripples that I already have in the illustration and then doing the same thing with the white pen. So I just love how this one turned out. And then the one I did in the video, I couldn't, I can't, I'm missing one of my base plates, so I wasn't able to use any dies in the video, but this is the one. So on this one, I just put for your family because that's for one of my friends who's got three kids going back to school tomorrow. It's, oh, it's that's awesome. such a big deal that all the kids are going back to school. Finally. Melanie, so. Melanie just put that last card yes. up. Yes. Um, okay. No, the one before that, the other slimline yes. one. Okay. All right. That is an incredible card for a daycare provider or a teacher right there. 
that's her or him with all the little ducklings. Oh my gosh, I love that. <laughs> and then, and I'm, I'm glad you told me to put this back up. So to say at the end, the for all you do, that is from Emily's um, thank you greetings. And so the so thankful, that fits with all of those different little endings of what you're thankful for. So I love stretching that whole thing out on the slim line for that, that long layout. Love that. Love it. Okay, so now we're gonna step it up just a little bit if you wanna do a little bit more coloring, but this is still really easy and this really pops. Here is one that I have with that mallard duck. And this is a single layer card. And I just did blending with just some of the grass green and I just let it fade up. And I just love how that kind of creates like a misty background. You don't even have to create um, you know, trees or anything in the background. It's almost like mist is just rising off of the water. So that just really kind of indicates the sky. And then you can see how I have put the cattails here, having a larger one and then a smaller one that creates a foreground. The duck is the middle ground. And then that tiny cattail is the background. And you can also create really simple mirrored effects on here by just flipping the stamp over without re-inking it and stamping it again. And that is what is creating that. And then this is just marker, just like three, two or three different um, greens that I used. And so that is creating um, just another kind of foreground element there. I'll be doing that in a video also. Wow, that's amazing. And the coloring on that that duck is spot on. I saw him yesterday right outside of my, uh, in my backyard on our little and it, pond. It is very easy <laughs> to do. This is only, I think, maybe three or four colors of markers. Um, I have all of that shading in the head. Um, there's so much black on there that when you stamp it in black, if you just put in a little bit of green, it really creates that iridescent look of those shimmery emerald green feathers that they have. Yeah. And you know, you don't, what I noticed is you don't have to over ink these stamps either. You don't have to stamp them twice. You give it one impression and all that detail just shows up. If yeah. you over stamp it, it kind of can actually, that, that ink just bleeds and it can kind of, you know, ruin the detail. Just that light stamping is perfect. Yeah, and I stamped mine a couple times today with my Misty when I'm doing those little ducklings just because I need to re-ink my pad. I've got a re-inker on order. So y'all will be able to tell just because you can kind of see how it just looks a little bit paler, the ink. So here's another one I did. So I wanted to show you one that I did with the male and the female and two of the little babies. So these are with the smaller ducks that you saw there at the lower half of the set. And I just wanted to create more of a sky here by just masking in just a really simple sun setting. Used your blending brushes for this and just some of the sweet mango and the wild dandelion ink. And then just with a marker, you can just look at your stamp turned upside down and then just do some little dashes to create that reflection of the duck and the water. And it really, I mean, you look at it and you can just feel the water moving. It's, it's, you don't have yeah. to be a great color or an artist to be able to do that. It's very, very simple. And for those of you that think you can't do it, make sure you watch Melanie's videos because she breaks it down and makes it so easy that you'll see how easy it is. Sometimes overthinking it, you know, you think it's so complicated and then you see how easy it is. So Watch but I'm really videos. excited to see. I'm really excited to see what our customers and friends are going to do with this set because I know some of them are going to look like it should be hanging in a museum. I've seen some blending that people have been doing lately, and all the details they've been adding to create the sky and the water, and it, it, they're just it's it's photographic looking. It's amazing, and that's 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 more that I'm going to be doing in my videos probably just for for the sake of time. I try to keep them a little simpler. Um, these last couple that I wanted to show you. These are just showing some of the flying ducks. So I love how these um, turn out. One of these I have um, a sun stencil on, and then the other one I just masked a circle with a little blending around it. And for this, whoop, for this particular one, I wanted to make it look like it was a little bit lower in the sky as if these have all just taken off out of the water. So these are just the cattails stamped over and over again right there. So I just think this is super sweet for a couple or an anniversary card 
to have that male and female. And I've got four different flying ducks. So there's so many different combinations that you can do on these also. But I think, I think my husband would just love to get a card like this. Oh, definitely. Absolutely beautiful. Wow. Well, let's go back to my overhead just so I can show the stamp set one more time here. Um, here we go. So here's the stamp set, just in case anybody's tuning in late. This is called Magnificent Mallards. Melanie keeps expanding on our nature collection. And oh, everybody's asking, what's your channel name, Melanie? So if you go on YouTube, type in Melanie Menchinger. Mm -hmm. And if you can't find her, um, you could probably type in Melanie Gina K Designs and yeah. she would come up. If she doesn't come up that way, remember, you can always find Melanie's YouTube channel from our website. All you have to do is click on the About tab and click on Our Team. Click on Melanie's beautiful face and all of her social media sites come up, including her blog, her Instagram, all of that. So you'll be able to find her there. Melanie, this is incredible. Thank I you. absolutely love this. And your cards just blow me away month after month. And I agree with you. For those of you looking for inspiration, come on over and join our Facebook group. It's called Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends. I'll tell you what some of our members over there have done with Melanie's sets and with all of the beautiful yeah. stamp sets. We have, I mean, we have members in there. They're design team quality cards. They are amazing. So make sure you come and see what our members do and share what you do because we have members from all different levels, from people who just started making cards all the way up to uh, people that, like Melanie said, their cards should be hanging in a museum. And do you Melanie have time for just a couple couple more things I forgot to show? Just Absolutely. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. okay. So I, I brought this in to show y'all. So I've been uploading all these idea sheets that I've been able to put them together really quickly because they're all based on cards that I've already created for my videos, for the releases. So I've just been able to do some mock-ups so they're all in one place. So these are in our Facebook group as, as well. They're a free resource. We've got them in the file section. So I am uploading this after I get off of here. Um, oh, but no. this is the sheet that shows all those different layouts in the cards that I just did. So you'll have access to all of those that you can look at. And I made a little cover for it because I've been stamping and I mean, I'm printing out all the different ones that I have for my state and flowers. And I'm, I'm working on them for all of my sets. Um, but I just want to point that out. So I've got it ready to go already. I got it, got it ready last month when I turned it in. And then just two more cards I want to share really quickly. You so bet. here is one using Emily's fun greetings. And so I've got just the two little baby duckies that oh. are sitting there looking at each other. So I just, I love these big greetings that she has. So I made a bunch of other cards. I don't, I don't have them in here in my pile, but I'll be uploading those on Facebook. So that's one with just the tiny ducks. And then here is that one for your wife with love that I talked about. And so this is another scene that I did. And I got to point out here, I did not mean to put these flying ducks up here. I accidentally dropped my ink pad when I had already done all this work on the card. And it wasn't something that I could get off with my sand eraser or anything. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to stamp some ducks on there. So anyway, that was that is beautiful. my boo-boo and my quick fix. Okay. So, and I noticed on that one, if you, if you hold that up again, yes. those cattails in the background, it's almost like you just like stamped off. So they're, they're just fading into that mist yeah. and it just gives you so much depth in that card just by stamping it right next to the other one, but like a second generation stamping. So yeah. it just appears further back. That's brilliant. Yeah. And then just covering up that horizon, then you're just getting the tops of them. So you don't always have to have them poking out of the water. So that really creates a lot of depth in the card. So yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I love it. Melanie, this is another winner here. The Magnificent Mallards. You can find it now in the What's New category over at Gina K Designs. And then don't forget to head over later to Melanie's channel. We're also going to send a newsletter out this week and we'll add all of the videos that everybody on our team and videos that I've made, we'll get them all into that newsletter. So if you haven't subscribed to our newsletter, you can at any time 
by um, going over to our website and subscribing to our newsletter from there or in our Facebook group. It's in the announcements where you can sign up as well. Uh, Melanie, I love this. Thank you. I love this. I think people are going to have so much fun with this. And again, another great one for the guys who just don't want the flower cards. I love it. All (laughs) right. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for joining me tonight, Melanie. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for watching. I look forward to your cards. I look forward to going through all the comments I didn't get to read. I do catch up on those after the live. So anyway, thank you all. I love you. All right. We'll see you again. Bye. That was great. Oh, my gosh. She has ideas galore. And a lot of the stuff that she does when you watch her videos, you think, oh, this is so complicated on how to build a scene. But then you watch her videos and you're like, I can do that. So, um, and you know me, I don't, I'm not an artist, but uh, she's, she's really great. All right. So now, um, we don't have any more illustrators, so I'm going to take my ear buds out here. They're actually <laughs> woven down my bra through my pants. Let me <laughs> get this all out here because they hurt my ears after a while. There we go. Okay. Whew, that's like taking your bra off at the end of the day. Just shoot that thing across the room. All right, everyone. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of the other stamp, stamp and die sets that we have by our illustrators that weren't able to make it here tonight. So the next one that I want to show you here is a beautiful new set by Hannah Drapinski. Now, Hannah is doing a a series this year. She started in January and she's doing all the birthday flowers. And I know a lot of us are collecting these because we want to be able to make calendars and things like that with birthday flowers. They're going to make great gifts next year. And making birthday calendars for people is a great gift. It's a way for them to keep track of birthdays. And you're actually using the official birthday flower Plus, it's got the word of the month printed on there. So let's take a look at this. So this gorgeous stamp set is called Poppy Garden. And the poppy is the flower for August. Now, she did a couple different things. She's got this huge poppy sprig. Now, this is so big. Again, here's my very bad uh, card. This is an A2 card. Look how big that is. That's going to take up your whole card front. We did a die. I don't even know why we did a die for the big one, but I'm sure that those of you who do the big five by seven cards, and I did cut out a five by seven. This is a five by seven. Then you definitely could cut this out and make it big like this, or even cutting out a window where it's kind of cut out like that and stamping inside where you raise the window up. So this definitely has a die set. A lot of you have asked for these bigger dies, and I think that there's a good reason you guys have for that. So it's got this gigantic die. See how big that die is? And then it's got the other dies in this set to cut the single poppies so you can create poppy gardens. And then somebody tell me what this is. I want to say it's a gladiola, but I am not very good at um, flowers. So somebody tell me what this is, because I know you guys know what this one is. And normally Hannah's here to tell us all about it. And she couldn't be here tonight. She got baby duty tonight and she's not able to um, to join us. Now, I do want to show you it's got the August. It's also got happy birthday and thank you, but I really am jazzed about these. Oh, good. It's a gladiola. Thank you, Christine and everybody else who said gladiolas. Hope. Thank you, Karen. Appreciate it. Paula, Rhonda, you're right on it. Okay. Um, It's got, I am so proud of you. And, you know, I have a lot of people right now that have been struggling and going through some things and just making a card like that for, for them that says, I'm so proud of you. I love that greeting. And also, you are so strong. Isn't that beautiful? Jacqueline, you think this is a snapdragon? It might be. A hollyhock, Diane? I'm not 100% sure. But we will ask Hannah, and hopefully once we figure it out, we can get it posted in the description on the stamp set. But if it looks like a gladiola, and it looks like a snapdragon, and it looks like a hollyhock, I bet however you color it, it's going to make it look like that. So, um, but I think it's a gladiola. That's what I think it is. That was my first impression, but I don't know all those other ones. So, um, so this is her beautiful new set called 
Poppy Garden and the die set, both available now in our What's New category. Okay, so now I want to show you another stamp set. I know you're going to love this. So Beth Seleka always comes and joins us. And tonight she can't, she's got something going on, which is probably the first party that she's ever missed. But look at this stamp set. Best witches. Isn't this adorable? So Somebody asked if there was a pumpkin. Yes, this is a very cute little pumpkin with all these different faces that you can put on it. It's got a bat, it's got a spider, it's got a ghost, and it's got a witch's hat. Of course, it's got a spider web. And then it's got some cute greetings like, hey, and you would mix that with, hey, pumpkin, or hey, ghoul, like, hey, girl, hey, ghoul, um, hey, beautiful. <laughs> with this, oh my gosh, with the ghost, then best witches, and then happy Halloween. Now, what I love about what she did here is, again, this is one die set that works with two different stamps. So let me show you the die set. It's a little bit smaller. Again, it comes on the magnetic board. This one will cut both um, the line art style image and the solid image. So, you know, you can cut that out. It's going to be a little bit of a tighter border on the line art one, it's going to be a little bit of a wider border on the solid one. But the solid one allows you to do all kinds of cool inking techniques and emboss resist and things like that. But if you would like to do fast cards, fast coloring, maybe you're doing a lot of trick or treat candy and you like to decorate the bags, you can use these solid images, do an inking technique on there, and then fill in these line art images and have a super cool kind of tattered look or ink blended look right on the stamp. So yes, I will definitely try to get a card in with this, or at least, I don't know about a card. I would tend to use this more for little favors to give to people at work or to, um, you know, for trick-or-treating or if you've got grandkids it's a great thing you can make little you know individual candy bags for them and use this as the flap and decorate it so maybe you have young kids at home and you're doing a little halloween party because you don't want the kids out on the you know in the neighborhood you just want to kind of stick with a small group you can do a party and make party favors so many fun things that you can do with this so i absolutely love this now somebody's going to ask me what this is <clears throat> Pardon me, I'm dry. This is the band that goes around the witch's hat. So you can fill this in with this, or you could even stamp this with embossing ink, put it on there, and then emboss it in silver or gold. So there's so many possibilities for this stamp set. Yeah, it does look like you can decorate um, the pumpkin with a face. Yes, it does. You have lots of different eyes here that will fit on the bat, will fit on the ghost, will fit on the pumpkin. And then you've got smiles. And these smile, I mean, like some people don't like the scary stuff. So they want just a little happy pumpkin. Other people like the little bit of ghoulishness. So they want to use this style of smile, but both are super cute and um, lots of fun ways to use this set. Yes, you could definitely use this as a gravestone. You're absolutely right. That's a great idea, Marianne. I love that. She said you could use this ghost as a gravestone. Yeah, you could mask that off again, just like I told you about the banner. Take a little washi tape, go across there, ink it all up, and that'll make a nice straight line, and that could look like a gravestone. Or you could fill it in with green and make it look like grass. Very cute. I love this one. And I wish Beth was here because she always has like 20 cards to show us. But uh, she will be posting lots of cards in the forum over on Facebook, probably within the next day or two. Okay, so I have one more stamp set to show you, and then I'm going to get into the new bundle and that secret little thing that I have for you, which I'm so excited about. So, Arjita, who designed some of the most beautiful floral sets I've ever seen, has a gorgeous one for you this month. And this is called Grateful Spray. So let's take a look at this one. This is just beautiful. So it's got this large flower here. And again, we did a dye for this large flower this time as well. 
we're trying to kind of get a grip on whether you guys like that or you don't like that. Some of you, if we do it, you say, I don't need it. Others say, oh, I wish I had a big one to cut that out, especially for like slimline cards, you know, the real big long ones. So it's got this beautiful spray of flowers here. Then it's got individual flowers and leaves and then some really nice grateful for our friendship, grateful and blessed. Um, grateful for you. You are the best. So very grateful. We are so grateful. That's one of those for families or couples and grateful for our life together. Now, it also, like I said, it has the die set in here. And this is such a whimsical font. Now, next month, we have a different grateful set coming out with a more classic traditional font, maybe a little bit I don't know how to how to put it, but but more um, maybe more elegant. I don't know if that's the right word, but this is just so whimsical. I love that font so much. Just a beautiful, beautiful, great, grateful word. I love it. And the bundle that we have coming out, a lot of these can be used in the bundle, too. So I'll be showing you that in a minute. So. If you have this one and you love these flowers, this is going to also work great with the new bundle. So that's by Argita. It's available now at GinaKDesigns.com in the What's New category. And again, that die set comes on this uh, thick magnetic board. I know this one is amazing. One of the things I really like about her line weight is these are really great for embossing in gold or silver. I like the line weight of these stamps for that. And then you can color and just have that gold fleck. It does make it very, very elegant. So, and Mary, if you're more of a fussy cutter, that's great. I totally get that. That's the beauty of not selling these as one piece together. You can buy just the stamp sets and you can fussy cut them if you like. Or for those of you who have a scan and cut, you can do some of the individual flowers and stuff that way. So that's why we do them separately. But for those of you that love to die cut and I fall into that category, I love dies. I can't get enough dies. They, we do have the die set. All right. So Grateful Spray by Arjita Singh. All right, now it is time to show you the bundle. But first, first, I want to show you this very special thing that we finally have. This has been a long time in the works. I put this order in after approving this product eight months ago, and we didn't think we were going to have them until around Christmas. But we got lucky and they hurried up and got it done for us. And so let's go to the overhead. All right. So you guys all know that we have some pretty amazing blending brushes, right? If you haven't tried our blending brushes, you really have to try them. The hair is super, super soft on these. I call it hair. It really isn't hair. It's plastic. But um, blending brushes are made with a plastic type of thing. And that's so that they come clean. You can clean them more easily. If they were real hair, I think it would hold on to the ink more. But they're super soft, super luxurious. And they've got the nice white handle. I really like this because it's just so aesthetically pleasing in my craft room to see the white handle and all of that. So we have these in sets of 10. Like you know, we have our, our um, set of 10. We also have fours and twos, sets of fours and twos. And I know so, so many of you had these, have these because we've already, um, I know that we've sold, I mean, it's it's gotta be probably 60,000 blending brushes already. People love the blending brushes, but we finally did it. I wanted to show you this. We have the baby. The baby blending brush is here. It's the little mini. Now, look at how cute that is. It's got that same soft hair. The handle is exactly the same size as the big one, which means it's going to fit in your brush stands, whatever brush stand you're using. If you're using ours, it's going to fit just perfectly. But these little minis are perfect for the layering stencils, especially our new one, any of these little tiny details and ways that you want to shade into small areas, it is harder to do with the bigger blending brush. So now we have the baby. 
Now we sell these in four packs and two packs. So if you want a full 10, get two fours and a two and you'll have 10 and that will give you your entire rainbow plus brown and black or tan and gray, whatever you want to do that way. It'll give you the full rainbow. We also now have, and I just put them in here just because I, I've been using them, and we now have our brush stand available separately. So if you want to get a brush stand, maybe you have blending brushes from somewhere else and you love our brush stand. Maybe you like the fact that when they come back in stock that our brush stand has this insert too that you can buy and pop in here to hold all your other tools and extra blending brushes. We now have just the brush stand by itself. So you can buy just the brush stand. And you can also buy, <laughs> I saw that comment. <laughs> And you can also buy just the color clips. So I know a lot of you are asking for the color clips because you have other brushes. Maybe they're black handled or maybe they're white handled, but you wanted color clips. Maybe you wanted more brushes, so you wanted more color clips. And now you can get color clips separately. You can get our little mini baby blending brushes separately and you can get our brush stand separately. Now, I will show you that on the bottom of my brush stand, everything's going to fall out. I have this little uh, Lazy Susan thing. I do have a link to this on our website. It's if There's a drop-down tab that says Things I Love. And they come in a two-pack, which is perfect because now if you have your babies in one stand and you have your your adult ones, <laughs> these are the grown-ups, you have your big ones in another stand. These come in a two pack. That's what I linked. And you can, all I did was tape that on there with some of our terrific tape. You can use score tape. You can use any kind of tape. And I just put it right on there. And that makes it able to spin really easily. So these are available now in our store. The color clips are available now. And you can get baby brushes, which I'm going to use tonight in my project after I show you this gigantic bundle that we have. Okay. I did ink up a couple of them. They're so cute, aren't they? Oh my word. They're adorable. All right. So let me get these out of the way and it is time to show you the bundle. So here it is. This is the way it comes to you. It's all packaged together in bundle format. Um, this is a big bundle. This bundle, if you if you purchased our A Little Hello or our A Little Love bundle, um, they were a smaller bundle. They each had three stencils, but they had a smaller die set. It didn't have this many dies. We've got dies nested inside dies all over the place. And it had a mini stamp set. So just for reference, let me see if I can find it here somewhere in my mess. Just for reference, this is the size of a mini stamp set. So the Little Hello and a Little Love had a stamp set this size in it. This bundle has a full six by eight stamp set. So with that being said, let me show you this stamp set. Because the stamp set, guys, I have ideas for just the stamp set by itself. This is the stamp set. And this, the whole bundle is called Fluttering Fall. And the reason why I wanted to do this, I had my daughter, Alicia, do all of this. She drew all of the butterflies, all of the insides, all of the bits and pieces. I told her that, I guess it was about two years ago. Can we go to the front shot for a second? I guess it was about two years ago that Rena and I taught a class in, I think it was Omaha, Nebraska. I think it was Nebraska. It could have been in Western Iowa, but it was out in that part of the country. And we were there in September and it was butterfly migration. And there, I have never seen so many butterflies in my life. It was the most amazing thing. They were everywhere and they would land on you and they were so colorful and beautiful. 
And so every time we get to fall season, that's a little memory for me. I just remember Rena and I kind of doing our thing, teaching a class together, being with people that we love to be with. And um, the butterflies is so magical. It's almost like the fall comes and these caterpillars just shed their old skin and they just are renewed and reborn and they're just everywhere. So fall butterflies remind me of fall. I know leaves and I know sunflowers and all of those things are very fallish and they're beautiful. But for some reason, the butterfly I really connect with for fall. So I said to Alicia, I want to do butterflies. And she said, what kind of butterfly do you want to do? And I said, all of them. So she designed three different butterflies for me. And um, they're all really, really beautiful. So let's take a look at these stencils. Now, these are not like the other stencils where you just line them up in the misty and you kind of stencil the whole thing at once. These are all meant to be individual elements, okay? And that's why we have so many elements in this set. And I'm gonna show you how to use it in just a little bit. But we have these insides of our butterflies. So we've got the one, two, three butterflies, and then we have three different flowers. Now, they're not, they don't all like line up just straight up and down because we had to do a little bit of movement to get everything to fit properly. So um, most of them do. The only one that's a little bit wonky is this flower. So all you have to do is turn the flower a little bit. So for this one, you just turn the flower to make it go on top, turn it sideways. So what you can do is if you are worried about that or you don't want to think about it every time, you can put a tiny dot right there with a Sharpie, and then you can put a tiny dot right there with a Sharpie, right there and right there. And that will just remind you of how you have to turn this one to get that flower. Okay, and then we have this flower here, which layers like that. Then we have some leaves and very interesting leaves too. So these little cutout leaves are just beautiful. Okay, and then we have all of the insides of the butterflies. Look at the detail on those. So obviously this one goes inside here like that. You can see that. This one goes inside here like that. And this one, which Alicia just came up with this and I thought that is so beautiful, goes in here. Now you can use any of the bodies with any of the butterflies if you're just stenciling on the cardstock. But if you want to die cut them, there are specific bodies for specific butterflies. But I don't recommend stenciling these butterflies and then cutting them out with the die. I recommend doing it the opposite way. I recommend just cutting a lot of butterflies out of white cardstock and then stenciling them afterwards. And that's what we're going to do tonight for a little project. And then I have to tell you that these stamps, if you don't want to stencil the insides, you can stamp them instead. And you can stamp them in gold, like in Versamark and do gold embossing powder, or silver embossing powder. Um, you know, they, they all fit perfectly, just like they would if you were stenciling them. We also have bodies that you can stencil. So, I mean, that you can stamp. So maybe you like to stencil the two layers, but then you want that body to feel raised. So you can stamp the body on there with some embossing ink and then use black embossing powder and give it a raised feel. Then we also added similar flowers and leaves in here to do background papers, to use in the wreath builder, and just to have some detail that you could put on like borders and things like that. So these little guys don't have dies, these tiny ones. They're meant more for wreath building and backgrounds. Um, then, of course, we have thanks and thankful. So thanks for all you do, many thanks. Don't you love that font? Isn't that beautiful? thankful for you, um, love you so much, love and prayers. And then these two greetings, which I really love. Sometimes the smallest things take up the most room in your heart. And then butterflies remind us of just how beautiful change can be. 
So those are the greetings that come with this set. And like I said, Arjita's set with all her thankful greetings, you can use that with this because we didn't only do coordinating dies, but we did a big word die. And the word I chose is grateful. So here is that grateful die. We have the grateful and we have the shadow because I know a lot of you guys are really loving the shadow dies because you can, you know, die cut that. And even if there's a lot of black inking on your card, that shadow die cutting it out in vellum or white cardstock makes that greeting pop. So we have the grateful and shadow die set. And then all of these dies that coordinate with all of the stenciled images. So that is the new layering stencil bundle. And these bundles are really meant to work together with our other layering stencil bundles. I know a lot of you are waiting for a little hello to come back in stock. It has been ordered. It is coming back. But the flowers in there can be stenciled and um, die cut and mixed and matched with these flowers. And you can make gorgeous flower gardens for fall and then pop your butterflies up on there. So lots of fun things to do. Okay, so, and I did wanna show you these too. These are the brush sets. They come in the four pack and the two pack. These are the babies. All right, I wanna call them babies, but I call them minis. But I feel like calling them babies because they're so cute. Okay, so let's do a couple flowers first. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start with the big open flowers. That's this one. And I, I picked a whole bunch of colors. I really want this card to have a more autumn-y feel. So instead of using wild dandelion, which I love, and it still is autumn-y, I'm going to use sweet corn. I don't get to use the sweet corn enough. Well, I do get to. I just forget to. Um, our 6x6 six six pa pattern paper, somebody's asking what the weight on that is. I think it's probably 24 pound. It's not a cardstock, so it is a little bit lighter weight, more like a paper weight and not a cardstock weight. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start and I'm going to stencil these two flowers here. I have my yellow blending brush and I am going to see here. Oh, thank you so much. And I'm so glad. A big shout out to One Click Wisconsin. They are our website caretakers. They take such good care of us. They ran diagnostic tests today on our website, knowing that we were having a release tonight to make sure everything ran smoothly. So thank you so much for acknowledging that. And thank you, One Click, Bridget and Rich, and the whole gang there at One Click. We love you. Okay. So I'm going to ink this up with some sweet corn and I'm going to start a little heavy in the center and I'm just going to work my way out toward the outside. Okay. And I love how the bristles of the brush catches the edges and makes it just a little bit dark. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing on this smaller one. I really need my ink stands. Let me get those too. Okay, see, I smeared that a little bit, but you don't have to do that. You can do a little sticker. You can do a little nail polish dot, something that, you know, makes it easy for you to find how to line them up. Or you can just look because it's not that hard, but I'm always trying to go for the path of least resistance, you know? Okay, so there are my two flowers. Don't they already have so much depth? I love the depth that you get from the stencils. You just... It's just hard to get that from stamps. All right, Tom, what did I do with my um, my tidy towels? I think I took them in the bathroom. Can you go in the bathroom and get them for me? <laughs> I took them in the bathroom to wash them, and then I went to the bathroom, and I left them on the counter. So while Tom goes and gets my tidy towels, I am going to clean my stencil. I just sprayed a little water on there. On a paper towel. Normally I use my tidy towel and then I just wash it later, but I just want to get the ink off of there. Okay. This way I don't have ink on there when I do my butterfly. <laughs> 2000 watching on YouTube. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, we've got, we've got well close to, 
I think we've got over 3,000 people tonight. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much. It's great to see you. Yeah, if you don't mind on YouTube, giving this video a thumbs up, maybe uh, um, hitting the, no thank you, hitting the notification bell and subscribing. That really does help my channel. Okay, so now I'm going to add the second layer here. So let me zoom in just a little bit. All right. Okay, so I'm going to do the big one first here, and I'm just going to lay it. The thing that's beautiful about these stencils is they are so easy to line up, and you don't even have to think about it. You're going to be able to see right down into that, and it's going to be super easy. Okay, so I'm going to use a little tomato soup. I'm bringing out the autumn colors today. Actually, I think I'm going to use, no, I'll use tomato soup. That's what I want to use. I'm going to use it. So I have my orange blending brush, which is just fine. Now, if you have another color on here, like another orange, and you just want to rub it off before you start, just get like a textured paper towel and just kind of rub the excess color off. That's why I like having 10 blending brushes. I just like one for every color family. So all my oranges, I use my orange brush. All my yellows, I use my yellow brush, you know, that kind of thing. All right, so we're going to let me get this because it's going to shake all over if I don't. Do you wash the tiny towel with the other clothes? I do. I do. But but hear me out, okay? <laughs> hear me out. I do wash the tidy towel with the other clothes, but I actually do just a load of black clothes because I wear lots of leggings at home and everything. I, I'm Italian, so everything that I have is black. <laughs> and so... Um, you know, I do it that way and no color comes off on my clothes. If I was doing other colors in there, I might just do the tidy towels by themselves. So I'm using one of these ink stands from the ink stand shop. Um, and that just holds my ink pads steady without kind of jiggling around. It's got these cool little rubber feet, holds everything in place for me. So I'm using that. Okay, and I'm just going to line that up. Super easy to line up. Doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to ink up my tomato soup here. And again, I'm going to start in the center, and I'm just going to work my way out a little bit. Not much. Just a little bit. Like that. So I'm just catching kind of these areas here. Okay. You can see what that looks like. Now I'm going to do the same thing here with this one. I'm going to just turn it. This is going to run a little bit, but that's okay. Now for this one, I'm going to use a baby, and I probably should have used a baby to begin with. So I'm going to use one of the baby ones, and I'm going to start in the center, and I'm just going to add a little bit of that color. Okay, you can see what that looks like. So that just gives a nice little fade of color in there. Now we're going to add a center to this flower. So I'm going to um, I'm going to use red hot because I really want this to be vibrant. And the difference between our red hot ink and our red velvet ink, red velvet is a true red, red, red. Cherry red is a beautiful red that has just a hint of blue in it. So it's more cranberry or cherry. And then red hot has just a tint of orange in it, like a calypso red. So I feel like that one is going to be the right one to use here with this, this color combination. So Tom got my tidy towels out of the bathroom. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> I'm going to clean my stencil here. And then I'm just going to dry it. All right, get back in the action here. Now, these have kind of an oval shape, these centers. So we have some ovals here. I'm going to pop an oval into the center. And then once again, I'm going to use a baby blending brush because this is a tiny little spot. I don't want it to go all over the place. I want to kind of stick to the center there. So I needed to ink up a red one. And I'm just going to give that some vibrant red in the middle there. Okay, there we go. I'm going to do the same thing over here with the smaller oval. So there is a bigger oval and a smaller one. This one I want to turn, try to get it in the right direction. Okay, there we go. 
and again a little red get in there with that red hot okay so I can see what they look like aren't they pretty flowers they're so different than our other flowers that we have already in our layering stencils so I really am enjoying these I'm enjoying how we have so many different ones now that can mix and match together okay so I just cleaned that now I'm going to add the black centers now you could stamp them if you wanted because there are little centers here that you could stamp if you wanted to gold emboss or black emboss them but I'm going to stick with the stencil for these so there's two different ones I'm going to do this one here and I need my black ink pad so let me get my black ink pad excuse my arms reaching across here my head getting in the way okay I already have a black baby brush here all inked up and I am going to add black into the center here I took my artificial nails off and now I have no nails so I have nothing to grab with all right so we're gonna add that in there these little baby brushes get right into that detail I love that there they are and then we're going to add this one right here and do the same thing tiny little holes but these little brushes just fit right in there i don't know why they're so much easier to use on these little details than the big ones okay <laughs> look how cute they are Aren't they pretty okay so now let's do a couple leaves. So I think I'm going to start with jelly bean. I should probably clean this off. Now, uh, when you use black on your stencil, it does kind of stain your stencil. There's no doubt that your stencil will get stained. And it'll get stained a little purple if you use our dye ink. I do have some stamp cleaner here that will help. This is the Gina K Design Stamp Cleaner. It'll help a little bit. Get that off. Here we go. So that's pretty clean. So you can use that. You can also try alcohol, but I find that the stamp cleaner does work better. And I'm just going to go back over it with the tidy towel. I know I'm off here, but I don't want to get my piece of cardstock wet. Okay. So now I'm going to do some of these leaves. And let's see, I think I'm going to get a new piece of cardstock. I could certainly use that for a million other things, including my card base or part of my card panel. But I want to kind of ink these all up at the same time. So I'm going to ink all of these leaves up in green, and then I'm going to add a little texture to them using the baby brush. So I'm starting with jelly bean, which is a lighter green. You guys know my jelly bean green. You can also use apple mint for this if you want. Okay. And I'm going to ink this one. And just the way it catches on the edges already gives it a shaded look. I'm going to do this one. And if you guys are worried about the stencil being in the right direction, these stencils are all engraved with one, two, and three. And so you just want to make sure you're able to read that engraving. Then you know you're holding the stencil in the right direction. If, um, if you can't read it or it's backwards, it's not the right direction. So that will help you figure out what you have to do. Now, I'm holding this stencil because it's that easy to do. But if you want to to make it easier for yourself you can always use a little bit of washi tape maybe i will do that because i am going to use more colors here and i would like it not to shift so, well good question from lanice what's that monday night football starts soon oh my god <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh no am i gonna lose everybody and my own mind by not watching monday night football why can't they change their schedule? Why do I have to change mine? Right? Oh, that 
is a good question. I have to think about that. Did we even have Monday Night Football last year? I don't even remember last year. Okay, so now I'm going to use fresh asparagus. That's my darker green. And I'm going to add a little bit of shading using the baby brush, the little mini. And I'm going to just add a little bit around the edges here. So you can get into the tiniest areas with this brush because it's just so tiny. That is a really good question. Now that Aaron Rodgers is staying with the Packers, oh, well, they don't play a lot of Monday night games, the Packers. <laughs> I'll have to watch. I'll have to watch it on the NFL Network the next day. Okay. There we go. So you can see I'm just kind of going around the edges. It may not look like much right now, but wait till you see what happens when I take the stencil off eventually here. So I'm just going right around the edge. And again, with the mini blending brush, you can really catch the little edges without kind of going over the whole thing. Okay, so that gives us some depth. Now we're going to add one more color here. We're just gonna pounce this color on. So the color that I'm gonna use is Tranquil Teal. Oh, thank you. We can always have the football on silence on the TV and we can watch on the computer, right? We can still know what's going on without having to... Besides, I get so upset with football anyway that it's probably better for my anxiety <laughs> to just be here crafting with you guys. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I put a little tranquil teal on this um, mini blending brush and I'm just going to pounce on it a little bit in here just to add a little bit of texture. I'm do the same thing down here. Just adding a little bit. And turquoise, although a lot of us think about turquoise as a very beachy, summery kind of color, it's actually one of my favorite colors to mix in with autumn colors. It looks so good with those rusty tomato soup and faded brick. It's so pretty. So you don't have to put your turquoise away just yet. I'm just bouncing that in there. It's giving it a little turquoise feel, a little bit of more texture than blend. All right, so now before I finish that, I think I might want to I'm going to use some charcoal brown here and I'm going to use another little blending brush. This will be for my browns and my tans. And I'm just going to do this little twig because I love this little twig. I can't believe we were able to get that much detail from a stencil. It's one of my favorites. Okay, so now let's take this off and see what we have. Oh, aren't they pretty? Look at that pretty texture in there. Oh, I love it. Okay, so let me clean this stencil off because I'm sure we're going to need to use it again. And then I'm going to show you how I do the butterflies because the butterflies I do completely differently. People are saying, I'm sorry, I'm going to watch football anyway. Yes, I understand. I understand. Well, football is on replay and I'm on replay. So you pick your live and we'll be okay. We'll, we'll meet up again. It's not the end. Okay, so let's cut these out first. We'll cut these out and then I'll have my die cutting machine out so I can go ahead and cut some butterflies. So I'm just using my regular die cutting machine here. This bundle has me beyond jazzed, everyone. I love it so much. Okay, so I'm going to find that big flower and this should be pretty easy to line up. 
Let's see, flip it around a half a million times. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna cut that out. I don't know if something just fell or... All right, now I could tape it down and I probably should tape it down, but I'm gonna be brave. So root for me. <laughs> That's right, Sue, we can have both football and crafting at the same time. So you can see that's pretty easy to cut out. It's just a tiny little border around there. That flower is so delicate and pretty. And now we'll do the small one. So again, I gotta kinda, I gotta mark these. I like to mark my dies too. It helps me put a little Sharpie dot where, you know, the top is. Okay. Okay, here we go. There we go. I don't know. I'm really loving the way those stencils make <laughs> Nancy, what's football? Make flowers. I love that. Okay. Now we're gonna cut out these leaves. And again, these are fairly easy to cut. Although this one, because it's got that tiny little stem, I feel like it might be prudent to put a little washi tape down. And I think I'm going to. Tom, I feel like I'm in like in a, like a jazz club tonight. Mm. So how are you doing, Tom? I'm doing great. Are you? Tom okay. and I took a bike ride. And, um, oh my gosh. They're doing so much construction around here. I don't know if you guys ever get out on a bike, but they do. Look at how nice that cut. I just have to be proud for a moment. <laughs> um, they're doing so much construction around here and the roads are all chewed up. And I find it, it like, it's really hard for me when I ride on those rough and bumpy roads that makes my eyeball shake. I don't, I don't like the way it feels. You know, there's a name for that kind of road. For what? A bump, the bumpy roads? Yeah, the bumpy roads. Bumpy, painful roads. They're called hammer roads. <laughs> Oh my gosh, <laughs> Emma Rhodes. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> Got a little quiet there. <laughs> See, Debbie said you were quiet and then you speak and that's what you say, <laughs> Emma Rhodes. All right, there's another one. <laughs> That's exactly what they are too. I'm telling you, you're right about that. They are not, they are not that fun. Okay, so these are tricky. But once you figure them out, they're fine. I think they actually cut either way. <laughs> and if they don't, we're just gonna make it work. Okay. Ooh, I'm scared. Here we go. Hemorrhoids. <laughs> Hemorrhoids. Like, like 300 people just unsubscribed. <laughs> and by the way, we have gift certificates we're giving away tonight. So hang in there with us. All right. And then I'm going to try to cut this little guy out right here. This is an intricate one. So I'm gonna give it a shot. We'll see how it cuts. It should cut well, but it probably should have tape. Nothing like a good little stick cut out for an autumn bouquet. So you guys can use this for lots of cards. Here we go. Look how cute that is. Isn't that a cute little one? All right. 
So now we're going to cut out a couple of butterflies. So which butterfly should I use? I think one butterfly would be fine for tonight. Um, let me use, let's use this kind of rounded one. The one that will go with this image here. It's just a little more round and it's very sweet. So let's try this one. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this out. And then I'm going to show you why I cut it out first. I have to also cut out some matte layers for my card, but I'll do that in a little bit. So let's get to the butterflies. Let's shade this butterfly. Of course, you can go all over your cardstock and do butterflies randomly all over the cardstock, and that would be beautiful too. So you don't have to do all the cutting out all the time. You can just move that butterfly around and do whatever you want. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take just a tiny little bit of tape, and I'm going to tape this down. I feel like I want to do this butterfly a little bit more vibrant than the flowers. So the reason I do this first is because it's very easy for these antennas to be shifted up or down. And if you try to do this butterfly without, um, because, I, because we're giving you three steps for this, if we had done the antennas with the second part of the butterfly, the second part of the stencil, that would have worked, but then you don't get to mix it up as much with color. This gives you so much more versatility. So I'm going to put this right here on this butterfly like that. Okay. And then I'm going to start with, how about we start with honey mustard? Let's do some honey mustard. Let me get my ink stand. See it's sliding all over. Let me get my ink stand. Okay. So this is honey mustard. Now I'm just holding this over the butterfly. You could tape it down if you want. I'm going right in the center, a little heavier, and then getting a little lighter as I go out. So I'm heavier there in the center. Now, I'm going to hold this here and I'm going to get my tomato soup. You don't have to hold it. You could tape it down. And then I'm going to get the tomato soup on the mini blending brush and I'm just going to come in around the edges here. See how precise you can get? So you think I should make a card all by myself and then use Melanie's stamp that says from my wife? From my wife or for my wife? <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't think you should do that. <laughs> okay, so you can see now I was just able to use that that little blending brush to get right around the edges and see how that just gives such a glow. It's so pretty. Yes, Tom, they want you to do that now. You have, you have activated the launch sequence and now you must do it. All right. So now we're going to go on top of that and we're going to look how pretty that is. Oh, this is this fun. This set is so fun. So now let's go with a very light brown. So I want to go with warm cocoa. And again, I'm going to use that small blending brush, the one that had the brown on it. And if it's got too dark of a brown, all you have to do once again is grab a paper towel and just rub that color off. Okay. Even though the bristles are stained, it still won't transfer the color. Okay. 
So now I'm going to go in with the warm cocoa and I'm going to go heavy in the center here. Okay. And then super light handed just to get a little touch of color on this part of the body. Because I want some of that yellow to show through. Then I'm going to go back again and I'm going to get all the dots. This is what's so fun about these is you can just play and try different color combinations and, you know, practice your blending. Okay. Let's see what we got. Ooh. <laughs> yes. Okay. Clean in the stencil again. And now we're going to pick the right body. And so this is going to help us because we already have a die cut. And you're not ready for fall colors, Danielle? Well, you know what? The good thing about butterflies is you can make them bright pink. You can make them purple. You can make them turquoise. You can do whatever you want. Absolutely. So now we've got to find the right body. Now, if I had tried to do this part at the exact right spot, and then die cut it, it would not have worked out. But this is gonna work out just fine. So I'm gonna use, I was gonna use black, but I don't think I'm gonna use black. I think I'm gonna go with the charcoal brown. Okay. All right, so I gotta get my head in the way for a second because I gotta make sure that I'm in the right spot. And I believe I am, okay. And I did not do my roots. All right, here we go. Charcoal brown on the mini blending brush. I'm gonna get it nice and dark in there because I want it to cover the other color. And it covers beautifully, but it's still nice and just soft. Here we go. Isn't that pretty? That is one pretty butterfly. Okay, so it's so much easier to die cut a bunch of these and just sit and blend them in all different colors. This is almost like a tiger, isn't it? The color combination, I really like it. And I did just do a tiny dot so it's easy to pick back up. And I think it's a nice color combination with these flowers. It all lends itself to that same warm autumny feel, but then you get that little pop of turquoise in there with these and these leaves. Now I did a couple others and I'm, I have one more flower here and I do have a couple more of these leaves done. I don't know where they went. They're like all over the place here. Like they're under my ink pads. They're all over. And then of course that little branch. So now we can create a beautiful little, just a little floral bouquet and then the butterfly kind of resting on one of the flowers. I have blending brushes everywhere, but it's so fun. I can't get enough of them. Okay. And then I think we definitely should use this big grateful. So we're going to die cut this out and we're going to die cut a few layers now to finish up our card. So I'm going to get my die cutting machine again, and I'm going to back out because I'm so close right now, way too close. And I didn't give this a whole lot of thought of what size card I wanted to do. Did I want to do a mini slim line? What did I want to do? Um, a mini slim line would actually be very pretty. So maybe we could do a mini slim line card for this. What do you think? Should we do it? Let's do it. I don't know though. I was really, really kind of had my heart set on using one of these ovals. Let's do an A2, just in case there's people out there that are new to Gina K Designs and they don't have the mini slimline dies yet. We'll do something a little easier. So I'm going to cut, let me find my master layouts two die set. I know it's somewhere. I don't know where anything is. I 
feel like somebody came in while I was gone and did something to all my stuff. I know they didn't. <laughs> They're all like, uh-oh. <laughs> okay, let me get some brown card stock here. I'm screaming. Okay, the one color I need, I don't have, and I'm not going to make you run across the world, Tom. So, Are you sure? Yes. So instead of using charcoal brown, I'm going to use our chocolate truffle cardstock, which is a beautiful cardstock. It's a nice deep brown. Just a little bit lighter than our, is this it? I think this is it. Yeah, this is it. Okay. So I'm going to cut grateful out of this. So when you have these intricate dies, I like to lay them on their back, blade side up and off to one side of my die cutting machine. I find that this works a lot better for getting the details. This doesn't even look like our cardstock. I'm gonna use dark chocolate. How's that? I don't even think that's our cardstock. <laughs> okay, so I'm using dark chocolate. Forget the chocolate, the chocolate truffle. I have to get some of that. Yes, not too dark of colors, early fall. Yep, okay. <laughs> Why I cut them out first before stenciling? Oh, I'll go over that again. I'll explain that again while I'm assembling the card. Okay, so I've cut this grateful die out. Let me get my Tim Holtz craft pick here. And I'm just going to poke out these little parts here. Okay. myself. There we go. Okay. So there I have my grateful word. It's so pretty. And then I'm going to cut a panel out of this same cardstock using Master Layouts 2. I'm going to use the single stitched one. I'm going to cut it right from here. Okay, there we go. Now, there's that. Now, will this fit is the question. I don't think it will, but it might. So should I really try to conserve some cardstock here? So now I'm gonna cut a big oval. This is the single stitched oval. I'm going to cut this out of this panel right here like this. This is really, really conserving. So those of you that like to conserve your cardstock, this is a great way to do it. Okay. Here we go. So I'm cutting a big oval out of this chocolate brown. And that's the single stitched oval. Okay, now I'm going to put these aside and out of a white cardstock, there's a piece, I'm going to cut a white oval in the double stitched style. Now these, the single and the double stitched ovals, for those of you that are new to our company, I designed all of our single stitch dies to be just one eighth of an inch bigger than our double stitch. This way, you can use them either or, if you want a single stitch or a double stitch, or you can layer them together to get that nice little shadow layer. I love that. Like that. Okay. <clears throat> I know it's hard to shop and watch at the same time, isn't it? All right, so now I need one more piece of white cardstock. And did I use all my white cardstock already? I think I did. Let me grab a piece over here. I actually cut that brown one from the wrong piece, so I won't be conserving anything. Some of you knew that though, right? Some of you already knew that. 
So what I was trying to do is conserve, but since I cut it out of the wrong one, I'm going to cut the uh, Master Layouts 2 stitch die out of this piece of white, and then I'm going to go back and cut the plain one out of, uh, out of a <laughs> chocolate brown, dark chocolate. Y'all know my heart was in the right place, right? Okay. So I'm gonna put that there and then we're going to use this piece of dark chocolate and we're gonna cut out the plain rectangle from Master Layouts 2. You guys know I mix and match a lot of the Master Layouts together. They're made to mix and match. So each time you get a new set, there's ways that you can mix and match it with our other sets. And somebody was asking about the little beveled edge. All of the master layouts and all of our dies will create a little beveled edge around the perimeter. And that is on purpose. That is from that open die, allowing us to have that little decorative edge. If you don't like it, all you have to do is, some people don't like it, all you have to do is take your score tool. For example, if you have a score buddy, you can take the tool from the score buddy and just run it along the side and just press that right out. It comes right out. So you don't have to have the beveled edge. But if you like the beveled edge, and I do, I tend to like the look of dies, the way it kind of curls over a little bit, then keep it. All right, I don't even know if you're gonna see this, but let's let's see here. If I put these together and then I lay this on top, you're not gonna see very much of that outside, but I think it would still be pretty to have a little wood grain texture on there, no matter how light we decide to do it. Something for fall, very light, maybe just something like a uh, sandy beach. So we're going to do just a little bit of texture here. That's very light. I think I'm going to go a little darker. Okay, I like it, but not 100%. So I'm going to go with craft. It's okay to mix. Feel like I didn't see enough of it. There's light and then there's just too light. <laughs> there we go. Okay. I like that. <laughs> That's right. Tom can't play guitar and craft at the same time. So what is he going to do? How are you going to do that, Tom? So now I'm going to adhere this together. I have to take breaks. To take crafting breaks or music breaks? I'm not sure yet. <laughs> not sure which direction. All right, so we'll lay this down on here. That gives us a little bit of texture. I don't know. The wood always makes me feel more like fall. I don't know about you guys, but I like it. And then I'm going to just do a simple A2 folded book style folded card. So I'm, I have to cut a piece of white here off the side. I'm just taking an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock and I'm cutting it at five and a half inches. And then I'm going to just do a book fold, which is the four and a half inch mark. And then we'll just fold that down. Okay. So I'm going to lay that on top like that. <laughs> so Tom, we're going to give away this card and let's give away three $50 gift certificates. What do you think? So anybody, I'll just tell you now. So anybody who's made a comment is eligible to win because Tom's going to go 
all the comments come into one spot for us. Even though you're coming in from three different places, all the comments come in in one stream for us. So we see all of them. So if you haven't made a comment yet and you want to be entered into the drawing, go ahead and make a comment on what you think. You know, something like, I don't know, like Gina makes the best cards or... <laughs> Oh, just kidding. Okay, so now we're going to. Boy, I wonder if this oval would look good wood grained. It probably would. But let's just lay these out because I have them all over the place here. So this is where we're going to lay out our little design. I've got to get this butterfly in there. I did find that other leaf, it was floating about. Okay, and then we have to have room. So we got to move this up because we have to have a word here. And then we'll put grateful going across like that. Like that. Okay. So let's put the oval together first. <laughs> $50 gift certificate's a good one because then if you spend $50, you get free shipping. So you... If you already put your order in, you could just put another order in. And that's fun. Who doesn't like free shipping? I do. Okay, so I'm going to put this oval up a little bit higher on my card. This really does have an autumn feel to it, doesn't it? And now we've got to figure out what we want the bottom to say. So... Grateful. Let me get the stamp set. I already have Argita's open. We could use hers, but I want to do the whole thing here. So um, let's do for all you do. Grateful for all you do. That'll be perfect. But then we've got to figure out how we're going to lay out these flowers. So we put a flower there. You know me, it takes me forever to do this part. We can pop one up there. And this butterfly would go like there. And I don't even know if I'm going to use all this greenery. I might. Maybe just one flower. Or we'll put greenery here and we'll do the big flower. And put the smaller flower up here. And we can have that butterfly popped up. So if, you know, even if there is some leaves that it overlaps, that would be really pretty like that. Oh, I love that. That is so nice. And see, so I have extra bits and pieces for another card. So you never have to worry about having too much, right? Okay. So I'm going to leave that like that. And then I'm going to stamp for you. So I'm going to use my acrylic block or for all you do. Grateful for all you do. This is the scary part to stamp after you've made the whole card, right? Okay, so for all you do is going to go right down here. And I'm going to stamp it in charcoal brown. I have to test it first. There we go. Okay. Oh, testing it a million times here. Okay. So every other one was perfect. It's making me nervous. <laughs> okay, here we go for all you do. Good. That'll work. I'll take it. All right, Tom. So you were taking, should we give out, um, while I'm assembling this, while I'm taping this down and I'll just tell you guys what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape. What I like to do is take a picture with my iPhone. So I know what the 
layout is supposed to be and then I'll go back and reconstruct it. But right now I'm just going to kind of just lift and replace. And I like my greenery to go outside of the edge of the card and outside of the edges of my um, frames. You don't have to get it all inside. It can go outside like that. Oh, I love these leaves too. These leaves are so cute. All right. And now I'm going to pop up the flowers and the butterfly using the foam squares. So I have a few of them here. Let's pop the big one up first. I'm going to just do one. One is okay. I'm going to do this one this way. And then we'll do this one next to it. One is good because then... You, you know, the foam squares don't get in the way of the overlapping that you want to do. And then the butterfly. Now, if you're hand delivering this, you can always like push the butterfly up like that so that when you put it on the card, it actually looks like it's flying. You see that? And then what I'll do with that is... I would just put a foam square, but I would cut that foam square in half and just put it like in the center of his little body so that I could just lift his wings. I'll put this in a bigger envelope so it doesn't get crushed. So whoever wins it will not win a crushed butterfly card. Come on, let go. We'll have it just kind of like that. Isn't that fun? How it's raised like that off the card. Okay, and we'll just use a little connect glue for this and we will be golden. So let me grab my connect. And I'm actually just going to put the connect glue on the top here. It's just going to hang off the card at the bottom. Little tiny dots of Connect Glue. And I just love how that curves up around that oval like that. There we go. Here's my finished card. Isn't that fun? Now, of course, if you don't like that, you know, you can always put that back down, those wings. But I just, butterflies, they, they, they're meant to be alive. <laughs> they're meant to be come to life like that. So there's my finished card. All right. And I'll keep these little bits and pieces for another card that I'm going to do. Because you know we're going to be making cards with this bundle, right? You guys know that. <laughs> I love my bundles. They're so much fun. Okay, so Tom, let me get this on a pretty, prettier piece of cardstock there. Get rid of all the, the junk that's everywhere. Two hours. <laughs> Two hours? Two hours and three minutes. Two hours. Oh, and also guys, if you have like little rhinestones or little pearls, you can also decorate the butterfly's body too, if you want a little glitz in there. But honestly, that, just by itself is very simple and pretty. Okay. All right. All right. So first of all, before we give away the gift certificate, who is the winner of this card? Can we do that first? Yes. The okay. card. The card. The winner of the card. That's it's still drying. The glue <laughs> is still drying on that. Goes to Roxanne Brandeberry. Yay, Roxanne. Congratulations. All right. That's awesome. Yay. I like this one. Make it again. 
Okay, so Roxanne, all you have to do is send your name and your address to info at GinaKDesigns.com and let them know that you won the butterfly card. All right, Tom, now we have three gift certificate winners. Three people are going to win a $50 gift certificate. So okay. who are those people? Here we go. All right. uh, number one goes to Sue Ike. E-I-C-H. Congratulations, Sue. Sue. Yes. You win $50. I feel like oh, you win $50. You win $50. <laughs> All right, Sue. Number two goes to Emily Rotkamp. Congratulations, Emily. Am I the only one clapping, Tom? No, I got the clap. Okay. <laughs> the whole room's clapping. Okay. <laughs> and the last one goes to Michelle Harvey. Yay, Michelle, congratulations. Oh, how much fun is that? Oh, I love it. All right, guys. Well, for all of you who want gift certificates, please send your name and that you want a $50 gift certificate to info at GinaKDesigns.com and our customer service people will make sure that you get your gift certificate sometime tomorrow. All righty, so that's it for tonight, guys. I hope you enjoyed tonight's release party. I hope that you are inspired to create. I know Melanie has a new video. Lisa has a new video. I think Mindy Egan probably has a new video. Kathy Z has a video. We've got all kinds of videos out there. And um, everything is now available on our website at GinaKDesigns.com in the What's New category. Thank you guys all so much for being with us. We always have so much fun with you. We'll be back on Wednesday for another Stamp and Chat Live and a little bit more butterfly stencil, butter, butterfly stenciling. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you all so very much. And mwah, we'll see you again real soon. Good night.